Good day, greetings from Melbourne. I'm sure we've met before. If not, my name is Max. And this year, everything is online. So I'll be taking part at the Mobile Studies Congress at the University of Nottingham, Ningbo in China in November. And I would like you to be part of this presentation by sending me a short video. Hi, my name is Camille Baker. I am a professor of interactive and immersive arts at the University for the Creative Arts in the United Kingdom. And I'm answering Max Schlesser's prompt to address the challenges, changes and chances for mobile studies, for the Mobile Studies Congress. I think I got the order wrong, but that's okay. Um, I just wanna say that my involvement in mobile media and uh, mobile studies, I, say, I guess, is more broad. Um, I tend to think about mobile as anything that is wearable in some capacity or mobile in terms of you can take it with you. Um, so this could be even broader in terms of non-technological solutions, but I tend to think about it as uh, mobile in terms of mobile phone, but also wearable technologies, and more recently in terms of uh, immersive and um, you know, a virtual and, and augmented reality. And so these are the kinds of things that I think about. My uh, recent book was about this in the context of performance. And that's really how I think about it. How can we use mobile media, mobile technologies in a way uh, that is, uh, let's say augmenting or enhancing performance and by performance I, I'm thinking of dance, theatre, music, live art and anything in between. I tend to work in this uh, world called participatory performance. In terms of the changes, challenges and chances, I think the challenges are trying to keep the mobile devices and mobile media um, secure, uh, stop them from uh, intruding on our lives and, and prevent the surveillance uh, elements expanding. And then in terms of the chances, it's really uh, a lot of work is uh, happening in the immersive space. So there's lots of opportunity in AR, VR, uh, XR, all of these uh, different kinds of immersive technologies. And the challenges are really to help keep social media, um, I guess, accountable and have it less impose or impinge upon our lives and particularly to pr protect young people from the dangers, but also other types of people from the dangers of false uh, or fake news. So we've got a lot to do, but there are lots of exciting things coming as well. Hello everyone, my name is Michael Usheku, I'm the founder of African Smartphone International Film Festival. It's a platform where we showcase and celebrate films that are shot or made with mobile device. We are the first smartphone film festival in Africa and Africa's most prestigious film festival. In 2017, when we started the festival, we were looking out for films that were shot with a mobile device in Africa, but we found out that not so many films are made with mobile device in Africa, so it was really difficult for us to create films that are made with smartphone. So we started an awareness project where we had, we started training people and telling people that great films can actually be made with mobile device. And uh, after our first year, we see that there has been a very great turnout because we, due to our festival, a lot of film filmmakers get to start experimenting with smartphone, and now. Four years after, we've seen a lot of um, filmmakers from Africa, you know, making films with smartphone. Now, talking about the changes over time, in four years now, we've seen dramatic change in production-wise. The films that we receive in our first year are pretty much different from films that we are receiving now. You know, people are getting to, 
you know harm themselves with the technological tools that are available in the market and the ones that are, you know coming up the people are beginning to you know pay attention to storytelling you know not just a uh, smartphone um amateur way of making film but people now actually want to make great films you know once they know that it's going to be shown in the festival they want to make you know films that audience can be happy to watch so people are paying attention to picture quality the lighting is better so there's been a very great change over time i believe it's going to even become better thank you so much and i believe that smartphone is the future and uh, i'm so happy that i'm part of the future hello uh, I'm working on the model of uh, setting-based mobile music creation which uh, focuses on performative mobile music making. Responding to your question on challenges uh, in my area, they include production and time constraints. For example, making music uh, on location makes mixing and sound processing challenging and uh, requires relying on intuition more than on monitoring as the latter can be compromised. Uh, secondly, uh, rapid uh, mobile music creation means uh, less time for reflecting on the composition. Uh, thirdly, opting for portability and immediacy can mean um, sacrificing the recording quality when working with microphones built into mobile devices and lastly composing music with mobile tools often means learning how to deal with various idiosyncrasies and limitations of the platform. However, there are also many opportunities in this area such as being musically creative in typically not very creative spaces, for example during uh, commutes on public transport uh, or being able to record location sounds almost immediately uh, and being able to execute creative ideas much more rapidly and uh, using uh, algorithmic composition tools. Uh, and also being able to enhance the narrative uh, by using the music making tool to also film uh, the location or to use uh, screen capture. So those are just a few pointers that are relevant to the area of mobile music making. Thanks uh, for having me and all the best. In India, mobile has become a part of everyday life and it become a culture. So here, the not only during COVID, but in general, mobile has reached every nook and corner of India. And um, India is a content hungry country and where the, not only in terms of the entertainment, but news and educational content, people access across the sections through the mobile and they also become part of the content generation and I am as a teacher who has been teaching mobile storytelling to postgraduate students so in it, it is very apprehensive for the institutions to adopt uh, uh, the mobile filming practices in their curriculums because uh, there are bigger cameras there is a lot of attractive uh, attraction towards it uh, to work on the cameras and bigger studios but the but the problem is that they need a lot of money uh, which may distance many people not to uh, reach to that level but mobile phone filmmaking has made everybody a filmmaker and many people through their short films through their uh, creative um, ventures they could able to produce great films through the mobile phones it has great potential and during covid my uh, 40 students in their different homes they made intimate mobile phones they explored themselves they made their own parents friends neighbors um, even on the video chat they they included as a part of the films and the films they have produced is a kind of uh, a great inner self that is possible because the intimate self extension is the mobile where you can make stories of yourself and the world 
and you can tell stories so easily, so fluidly and professionally. The potential of mobile is not just only for a personal uh, uses purpose, but also across the fields, mobile journalism, mobile filmmaking and any other uh, um, the creative content production, this mobile is quite useful and my students, they amazingly tell that uh, the editing possibility and the collaboration and co-creation possibilities with the mobile filming is highly appreciated. Thank you. Hello, my name is Anne Leighton Massoni and I'm sharing with you the body of work mapping Fifi. I retraced my great grandmother's grand European tour. I was particularly interested in the impact of women travelers on the landscape being both subtle and underrepresented by comparison to men's. Not just the idea of leisure travel, but secondarily the effects of war, industry and development over time. Fifi, my great grandmother traveled from March to August of 1900 and I traveled from June 13th to July 23rd of 2018. My great grandmother used the popular camera of the day, a Kodak bullseye number two. I traveled with my iPhone seven, wanting to mimic the idea of ease of technology respective to our times. As an image maker, it was important for me to recognize the differences in our technology, but also to embrace those through the re-photographing process. Using mobile technology meant I could both make and share my images the same day. In each location, I would line up as best I could, knowing our lenses and cameras were different. Fifi made a photo album and I made an Instagram album using the hashtag, hashtag so that the series could be cataloged with ease. And as I looked out over the vistas she provided me, I marveled at our global development and at our ability to memorialize. Our desire for familiarity and sharing our experiences. While at Versailles, I was told that so many of the trees were lost in a devastating storm, so that much of the trees you see now are new to the park and gardens. While I tried to find a pathway with older trees, I couldn't ultimately identify the pathway she photographed and so chose my own. Work from the project is on my website, and if you'd like to see the rest of the images from my trip, you can head to Instagram and either follow me or search the hashtag MappingFifi. Hi, I'm Adrian, and I'm a smartphone filmmaker. The thing I love most about smartphone filmmaking is that you know, at any time you've got a, the convenience of a full production crew just sitting in your pocket. Whether you're out with family, see a beautiful sunset, or a story that's unfolding right before your eyes, you can just pull the phone out of your pocket, give that lens a bit of a wipe, tap on Filmic Pro, and away you go. You know, 4K broadcast quality footage just sitting in your pocket. It's amazing. And with that, you can either edit it on the phone or uh, throw the footage across to onto my iPad where I can use LumaTouch, which is, it has changed my life as far as editing. It's so convenient, fast, no more waiting for rendering it just renders real time it edits and exports pretty much in real time it is absolutely changed the way i edit and it's fully featured it's just it's a no-brainer for any smartphone filmmaker or even a filmmaker in general you can you know luma touch should be in your arsenal and from my point of view i love telling stories with heart and with that you sometimes you know interviewing people that are, are vulnerable um, and you know they get nervous with a normal film crew um, pointing a camera at them but with an iphone it just makes it more intimate and it allows them to really open their heart and you know tell their story it's fantastic hi there it's patrick kelly here uh coming to you from melbourne uh in my work from home bungalow during lockdown 2020 um, I, I'm coming uh, to you to, to uh, talk about some of the, the changes and challenges and opportunities uh, facing mobile studies in 2020 um, for the Mobile Congress. Um, so I suppose, you know, one of the, um, the key opportunities is that now with everyone working from home um, uh, and being completely disrupted in their work and their lives, 
these days um, that it becomes sort of more important than ever to make use of these technologies that we have at our fingertips. Um, I think that it, there's an incredible opportunity to continue to explore, um, you know, the kinds of stories um, particularly that can be told using these sorts of personal devices. It really does sort of change, um, you know, what we see as being different to what we usually see in mainstream industrial media. Um, but along with that, you know, I think a key challenge that uh, is going to continue um, is to, is, is how do we make this type of storytelling, um, you know, more diverse and inclusive, um, you know, especially as these things start to be, these sorts of technologies start to be embraced more by, uh, by industrial systems and mainstream media uh, systems. You know, how do we also include more people, emerging voices, um, so that, you know, we keep uh, learning more and more about one another as societies. Um, so that, that's my two cents on, on the changes and challenges facing mobile studies. Um, I hope that the, the Congress is uh, successful as always and, um, and stay safe. Hello everyone and thanks Max for asking us to make a contribution to your presentation on the use of smartphones and filmmaking. Uh, the biggest change, of course, I think we can all agree is that the technology is just so much better than it was a few years ago. Uh, I made my first phone film using this, the old Nokia N95. And uh, yeah, the, the film was okay, looked okay, but of course nowadays we know that the smartphone technology allows us to make some really brilliant looking films. So that's the biggest change. And I suppose that presents a bit of a challenge as well, particularly working with clients that might uh, be more used to seeing bigger, bigger cameras being used. And now they see a lot of people using smartphones in corporate video, and it's just taken them a little while to become accustomed to the quality and that that's okay to use a smartphone for making corporate videos. Uh, and with regard to chances, well, again, during lockdown, I made a my last short film I shot on my phone in our living room and we were in lockdown and I didn't have a lot of other things to do so uh, I certainly wouldn't have done it if I didn't have my smartphone available because we were in full lockdown and that was great fun to make that short film and uh, I guess one other opportunity is that working with clients when they're in lockdown and having to do remote videos and remote interviews, uh, we can ask uh, our clients to, to use their smartphones these days to shoot uh, in their own homes and then we can work with that footage rather than having to send them around a camera. So, so that's been an opportunity uh, during lockdown as well, thanks to the technology and smartphones. All right, I hope that was all useful. All the best, happy filmmaking. See ya. Hi. I'm Felipe Cardona. I'm from Colombia. I'm a social communicator journalist. I have a master's degree in information and knowledge society. And I've been working as a teacher in universities as well as a TV producer in national Colombian TV networks. And in the 90s, I worked as a TV producer and TV director for several TV shows or advertising. And from time to time, I made documentaries and a film for those public television networks here in Colombia. In 2004, I participated in the very first mobile short film festival in Berlin, Germany called the Micro Movie Award, and I won that festival. After 2004, during those years, I made some other short films with smartphones and won some other short film festivals as well in Europe and in the US. As a teacher, I have had several classes in audiovisual field, and as well, I've tried to bring the mobile filmmaking techniques to class for television production or filmmaking production classes. And as well, I've been invited to several academic congresses presenting the results of the research I've made during my classes and as a researcher and teacher in universities. I consider that interactivity and collaboration as well as augmented reality and virtual reality are the subjects we have to explore as filmmakers in the 21st century. I think it's very important to see these mutations and, and changes in filmmaking as an opportunity for filmmaking evolve. And I, I think we have to do it now because we are now discovering what to do with all those new resources in filmmaking. 
Thank you very much. I'm Felipe Cardona, and I invite you to keep building this democracy for film. My name is Eugenio Ticelli, I'm a programmer, artist and researcher and since 2004 I have been working in uh, projects that have to do with communities and mobile phones. Uh, in these projects uh, communities use uh, mobile phones to create uh, what I call community memories in which a group of people gets together to document and share specific aspects of uh, of their realities, of their concerns, of their views, their opinions and aspirations. Um, we have developed different applications in which uh, people who use them, they, they can take pictures, record uh, audio messages, record videos and send everything to a shared web page. Uh, so this is uh, basically the, the way in which this uh, community memories take shape. So uh, I have worked with a lot of people uh, around the world, with a lot of groups, uh, especially groups of people in risk of social exclusion. And the latest project is uh, called Sauti uh, Yawakulima, which in Swahili means the voice of the farmers. It's a project that started in 2011 in Tanzania. And uh, it started with a very small group of 10 farmers documenting and sharing their views on climate change and their observations of what was happening in their fields. Uh, but lately the project grew a lot. Uh, around 6,000 farmers are using the application now to share their observations, to share their knowledge and to give uh, advice to other farmers who are seeking for advice or are having any trouble. So in this way, uh, the mobile phone becomes a tool that can uh, help a group of people document a shared concern to exchange knowledge 
and to create some sort of um, safety network in which the community itself is the source of this exchange and mobilizes knowledge as a form of uh, resilience. Hi, my name is Dave Cowlard, aka Photo Urbanist. I'm a photographer, filmmaker and educator based in Auckland, New Zealand. I'm interested in the way we live our lives in the city and how recording moving image and sound with mobile devices can be used to provide fine-grained urban reportage of the spaces and places that we inhabit. For me, the key reasons for making mobile film and photographs is the versatility of the camera and the possibilities for wider public architectural discussion and criticism brought about by mobile's networked capabilities. Embedded GPS data, metadata and hashtags provide the basis for a rich layer of urban annotations that can further inform the development of new forms of database documentary. There have been great changes in mobile camera technology and software that now allow for advanced sensing and imaging while enhancing the poetics of urban storytelling. 360 degree video and spatial audio recording in particular will continue to provide new ways to represent and interact with the built environment and the introduction of LiDAR capabilities will signal another step in this direction. The challenges faced by mobile are significant and range from the technological to the ethical. While acknowledging this, for me, one of the interesting challenges is to make short-form video that is shareable and that can appeal to and reach an audience that want more than throwaway marketing and teenage humour. The chances afforded by working with mobile devices are more direct informed understanding of the world's urban centres, similar to Walter Benjamin's concept of knowing architecture through habit rather than contemplation, mobile video allows audiences to experience cities in ways that those who live there do so. Because mobile allows both filmmaker and resident to record the chance encounter, the time of day and the rhythms of the city, while also being able to fill in the details with their comments and experiences. Hello, my name is Dr. Gerda Kamar. I'm an associate professor at the School of Image Arts at Ryerson University in Toronto. And this is my contribution to the Mobile Studies Conference and most, more particularly Max Schleser, a presentation on changes, challenges and chances. We currently live in extremely challenging times and filmmakers often act as historians of the present as they study how human beings situate themselves in the world amongst all other things. They try to explain the political, social, cultural, or ecological events by situating them in a broader historical context, often focusing on the zeitgeist of the times. The zeitgeist, or the spirit of the times, is the general intellectual, moral, and cultural climate of an era. It is often used to describe the general set of ideas, beliefs, feelings, etc., that is typical of a particular period in history. This year, the challenge I've put forward to my students is to find a specific situation, event, character or thematic subject that expresses and illuminates our times at this current crossroads of a world pandemic, major social political shifts, identity struggles, climate change and other ecological issues. A secondary challenge is that they need to be creative with the limited means available to them, which for many students or artists mean to become active mobile filmmakers rather than following the traditional path projected in film schools or by the industry, which means productions with larger cameras, larger crews and larger budgets. The motivation was really to embrace change, or as Lucy Lippard stated, artists alone can change the world, neither can anyone else alone, but we can choose to be part of the world that is changing. The world we live in, and the particularly challenging times we are experiencing worldwide, is a chance to find new strategies for subversion and creativity. Mobile cinema has from the beginning offered the chance to do this, as it basically turned the classic economical model of traditional filmmaking and of journalism upside down, creating a, chan a channel for unheard voices and untold stories. I think that the current changes are a challenge that we should accept as a chance. Hegel believed that art reflected by its very nature the culture of the time in which it was created. He also stated that culture and art are entangled because an individual artist is always a product of his or her time 
and therefore brings that culture to any given work of art. This is why Zeitgeist is such a very useful concept in the discussion of the current moment with all its social, cultural and ecological challenges. And there is no better tool than mobile cinema to express the Zeitgeist of the time as it has become the art form of this era and it has become the medium of many, if not most, contemporary artists. Thank you. Hi, greetings from Melbourne after 111 days of lockdown. We can finally go out. Not that the whole situation is over yet, but it's a right step. It's a good step in the right direction. So uh, that's also the reason why I won't be in Ningbo this year, because we can't leave Australia yet. We can leave our home world, not Australia yet. For the Mobile Study Congress, what are the changes, challenges and chances? Let's start with the chances. I think it's really fantastic to see that the capacity of the smartphones keep improving and improving. So this means new creative opportunities for things like filming at night. Um, uh, the technology of course is changing as well. So that means when we think about working with VR and AR, so the whole space of mobile XR will become significantly bigger. <laughs> and there's a whole industry behind this. And of course, the engagement with communities is really a fantastic opportunity. So going to the chances again. So it's not only about uh, you know creating some capacity to producing now industry standard work. So whether it's in Hollywood or whether it's in journalism, but we can also work with communities. And I think here the great thing is to really push digital literacies. So this means that we can not only engage communities, but we can also change people's perceptions and views about certain topics through the creative process and their engagement in creating a mobile story. Challenges, of course, is that because the smartphones in our pockets doesn't mean that these are low to no budget productions, but I think we'll get there. And yeah, I think the LRC to add is really creativity, because with creativity we can solve any issue that would be a challenge and turn it to a chance. I think that smartphone filmmaking came out of an experimental space and through experimentation we can really push the boundaries. And yeah, until then, stay safe and stay creative.